do men want? Manifests itself in relationships, and you feel it in relationships, and they can be very powerful spiritually. And if that's what you need, that's what you should go for. And she said, uh, "Oh, I'm going to go do a sweat lodge this evening." And I begged her to take me along. And that was uh, about six years ago. Welcome to Speaking of Men. This is public access television from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm your host, Mike Rivas. Our guests in the studio today are Earl and Rose Smith. Earl and Rose are the founders of the Married Mistress Association and the Monogamous Males Association. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, let's, uh, let, it's good to have you here. I'm glad, I uh, appreciate you coming down. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about what the Married Mistress Association is and how it came to be and what the uh, uh, Monogamous Male Association is. Okay, the Married Mistress is based on the premise that you are your, your boyfriend's or your husband's mistress. In other words, you keep your love life exciting. And that's where the Married Mistress Association came from. And it was really uh, Smitty's idea. We had an affair when he went to Iceland for a year. He's in the military. So, did you want to tell him about how that came about? Well, I can't say much about it other than the fact that I believe in being monogamous and uh, seeing that me and my wife were separated, I had to come up with something. So we had uh, a lot of telephone conversations and we mailed each other letters uh, frequently. We pretended or uh, whatever it took just to make the letter writing a little bit more interesting. And I guess it kind of cued her to start something. I thought he was on to something there. <laughs> That's grand stuff. I, uh, uh, we were saying before the program, we were talking a little bit, uh, um, uh, separations, especially in the military of couples, is a real stress on families. And uh, I think it's real, real important for us to uh, talk about that and be able to address it, you know. Mm -hmm. as in, uh, you know, uh, uh, tell me a little bit about what kind of services the Married Mistress Association offers. And uh, uh, you do, I know you do seminars and workshops and things. So. Right, and uh, we give the Married Mistress seminars, and then we also give the monogamous male seminars. And the Married Mistress, we meet uh, bi-monthly. We don't have enough men yet to meet in the monogamous male seminar because uh, Smitty was saying we just started the monogamous male. We started the Married Mistress first. And we have uh, bi-monthly meetings in the Married Mistress uh, Association. We also, I also get calls from people who are involved in uh, extramarital affairs and they're looking for some direction and I refer them to counselors that I have a list of and uh, we, we offer we try to offer support to married couples and give them reasons to be happily monogamous that's uh, that's grand stuff uh, uh, it, could you expand a little bit on uh, what uh, some of the motivations are for people joining um, some of the types of people that you get involved in we get a lot of couples, usually the people from the, the men from the monogamous male, their wives have taken the married mistress or their girlfriends. And a lot of women I'm finding have already been through bad marriages and they want to make sure they do it right the second time. So that's why they come for some more ideas to uh, keep their relationship exciting and monogamous. We, um, nowadays, especially with both men and women working, um, and uh, trying to hold careers together and, and uh, be fathers and moms and, and uh, employees and, and, uh, and, and a couple at the same time. There's just a lot of pressure. Um, uh, you want to talk about uh, some of the things that make marriages go stale and, 
and, uh, and uh, how you might think that men and women begin to lose the capacity for intimacy and closeness? Well, in my opinion, most people don't take their marriage as seriously as they take their jobs and things like that. So they have a tendency to marry, and in the beginning, an infatuation takes over. When the infatuation is gone, you take your marriage for granted. And I just think that what you should do is you should take your marriage and you should work with it, just like your job. You schedule things. We're not going to take all the uh, spontaneity out of the relationship by saying it's going to be purely a scheduled relationship. We're, we're not talking about that, but we are trying to say that you can't just take your marriage and say, I'm married to her. It works. I don't have to do anything. It's going to always be good. You have to work at it. Yeah, you do, and that's where the mistress comes in because a lot of people, when I say schedule in lovemaking, they look at me like I'm crazy, but that's exactly what a married man does with a mistress. He'll say, you know, meet me in room 205 at such and such. So she's already getting the stress out of her day. She goes there an hour early to take a bath and relax. When he knocks on the door, she's ready. And that's my premise with, with the married mistress. You can do that same thing with your husband. That's a two-way street, you were saying. So what we're talking about here is a, is a willingness to, to talk about that and not get shut down. You've got you to have people that are, that, are, that are committed to the relationship and, and are hitting that ball back and forth in the court so it doesn't just right. stay in, uh, in one. So uh, I'm wondering, um, you know, I, I think uh, this might be a good opportunity for us just to go ahead and take a tape uh, break. Uh, we have a, a little um, public service announcement that you might be interested in. We certainly hope that you guys will stay with us because we're going to be right back. Hi, we're Los Lobos. Survival is important to every community. And right now, AIDS threatens all of us. The only cure for AIDS is prevention. You don't have to have sex, but if you do, stay with your own partner and use a condom to help protect yourself. Please avoid drugs and especially don't share needles. Look around at your family and your community. That's who you're saving because survival means preventing AIDS. forest fires are started by people who never realize what they've done. Some never even set foot in the forest. Welcome back to Speaking of Men. I'm your host, Mike Rivas, and uh, we're speaking today with uh, Earl and Rose Smith. Uh, Rose is a regular contributor uh, or has a regular column and feature she does for Albuquerque's On the Scene magazine and she's founder of the Married Mistress Association. Her husband Earl is the uh, uh, founder of the Monogamous Males Association and what we're speaking about today is monogamy. And the, before our break, uh, welcome back. And Thank before you. our break, we were uh, talking about some of the things that allow marriages to go stale and uh, how men and women lose their capacity for intimacy and stuff. Did you want to expand on that a little bit? And well, I, I think that couples get into what we call the, the comfort zone. And they just get, they go along with their marriage instead of, you know, making their marriage exciting. They just go along with whatever their marriage brings to them. And we think it should be the other way around. You should bring something to your marriage and your relationship. So uh, what we do and, you know, we, it, the comfort zone is something that you have to fight constantly. So what we do is we just have to recognize it and say, we're getting too comfortable. We need to do something. And that could be going to a, you know, a hotel, going out to dinner, you know, just anything. Just be together, basically. You have to make time to be together. What do you think about that? Well, about the going out to dinner part, I just wanted to expound on that. We're not saying just take your wife and go out to dinner and have a little dinner, talk, go home. We're talking about like a romantic interlude. It's more like a date that you're taking her on. And whenever I feel like I'm getting into the comfort zone, I tend to flash back and say, well, I haven't done anything for a while. You know, maybe I'll send her some flowers on the job. You know, she likes that. She likes for 
I guess to get the attention of all of her co-workers, you know, she's got flowers and then they have to go home and tell their husband and their husband will say, well, I got to get you some flowers. And it kind of stirs up the pot there, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's, uh, so there's a, there's a real conscious effort yeah. to, uh, to, keep that, to keep that marriage alive and things. Uh, do you guys feel uh, that uh, monogamy gets support in the popular media? I know when we were preparing the interview, last night uh, you had some opinions about that uh. well yeah with the soap operas and all the glamour the glamour is to be um, you know have this woman on, in, on one hand and then have this this other lady and you know on the other hand and just to sleep around all you can then then you're supposed to be a, a, a man a real hunk or whatever and I think that real men in today's society are the ones that can stand up against the grain and say, you know, I don't, I don't need to be uh, typecast and go along with, with what the media presents because they pr present the glamour of cheating, but they don't al also show the bad side. There's a real bad side to cheating and fooling around. And when it he hurts. went to Iceland, it does, it hurts. And when he went to Iceland, he was telling me about how everybody was taking their wedding bands off. And so he had to go against the grain to uh, you know, stay monogamous. And so I think that real men stand up to, to what um, the soap operas and whatnot dole out. That's good, uh, that's good to hear you say. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, someone was saying that uh, uh, a lot of times they feel that uh, for men, two women are, is less than one. Because if you have several women, none of them get you. Right. And uh, it's a, it, uh, the whole, a big part of the men's movement is the fact that a lot of men uh, uh, are up here flying around somewhere in their heads and they can't get emotionally into their bodies and they can't commit and get, and women do that. Women get you right down, you know, I mean, if you want to get down and get your feet in the mud and get real, women uh, definitely, you know, uh, you know, about uh, six, eight months changing dirty diapers and, and you get grounded. Right. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it's real important, uh, especially with, uh, with the amount of flack that our families are taking and the amount of disintegration that, that, uh, that, uh, that we're catching now that, that you guys come out and, and do something like it. It's kind of neat. Uh, 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 what are, uh, let's, you know, we were talking about cheaters, and, you know, I always say cheaters never win. Right. And uh, I say that from experience, uh, um, you know, having having been an absolute fool in my life and hurt some people that I love sincerely and uh, having thrown a good marriage out the window because I was basically a dummy. Uh, what are some of the causes you think that bring people to, to cheat or do you have some opinions on that? Uh, well my one opinion and basic opinion is uh, from the time you were born uh, the sex role conditioning the male I was anyway taught that you, should, you don't want to get married right away, so you can't have a steady. You know, you, you should go out and date. Now, there's nothing wrong with dating, but it kind of forms that opinion in your mind that you're dating constantly. And then when you get married, you get used to that one lady, take her for granted, but it's still in the back of your mind that I like dating. Most married men are not content, and they feel that I've conquered one and have to go on, you know, and that's from the conditioning, yeah, early conditioning. What society tells you you're supposed to do if you're a male. You're supposed to go out there and chase as many skirts as you can. And that's where the reprogramming comes in. Right. You got to change that mode of thinking. Well, you hurt yourself, you know, I mean, there's a real wound that you receive. I, I, mm -hmm. I you know, it, it may sound old fashioned, but uh, somehow in there I believe that there is some sort of a of a holiness and a sanctity and, some, and a union that a man and a woman have that um, you start tearing it apart, you start p tearing chunks out of yourself. And you know, as I have a lot of guys say, yeah, well, you know, I'm you know, footloose and fancy free and, and I was in this relationship and uh, she didn't hurt me at all, but I always point out to them that part of their butt appears to have fallen off at some point <laughs> and uh, you, know, that they, right. you know, that they might want to reconsider their lifestyles. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. Uh, so uh, you, do you think men are, I mean, we're, we're usually painted as just foaming at the mouth, sex fiends out to make it with any woman. Do you think that that's the way we are? Or? No, I don't think that, that 
most men are that way. I think that society tries to portray men that way. And I don't think most men want to be that way. They want to find a one and only. They want to commit. But that's why we talk about being happily monogamous. They want to find somebody that they can be happy and content with for the rest of their lives. But I, I don't think that men are sex fiends like they paint them to be. That's just another role that gets handed to us, huh? Right. Yeah, that's... Uh, wonder who we really are. You know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know uh, you're uh, putting together a little book on, uh, on the subject uh, uh, of keeping uh, marriages alive and, and uh, being a married mistress. Uh, can you, uh, you said you had about, was it 75 things that, uh, you tell me about some of those or tell the viewership about some of them. Okay, it's just 75 ways to keep your love life exciting and there, there are things that, uh, it, they run the gamut, like do a, a belly dance all the way to give him a hug and a kiss when he walks through the door. Because a lot of the men that I interviewed for the book, the men that I interviewed were in extramarital affairs for the long term, ones that lasted like more than two years. And I wanted to know what was it that they were getting out of those affairs and a lot of them were saying that it was the little things that wives forget to do every every day like a hug and a kiss leave him a present in his car so he finds it when he gets ready to go to work in the morning and just little things that you can do and you can um, one I had uh, you can be a trick-or-treater where you can flash him after all the trick-or-treaters go um, go <laughs> home at night <laughs> and just different little things that uh, some of the women in the class have shared with me that they've tried in their marriages. Uh, there's a real call for, I mean, we hadn't talked about this before, but one of the, um, how do you remain, uh, just bump this off of you, how do you remain intimate and at the same time have space? I mean, that's one of the, in modern, uh, uh, in this we're going to get healthy quote unquote uh, in a relationship thing, there's this real call for space, you know. How do you remain nurturing and, and have space? Uh, well, part of it is just having open communication with your spouse. There's times when maybe I come home from work and I don't feel good. I try to be tactful and find a nice way to let her know that right now is not the time to talk to me. Let me have a little time alone. And then I come and I'll explain to her what went on and she's got to be a little sympathetic and understanding the same for me if she's that way and you know, the same thing goes for me. Can you guys give me some examples of nurturing? Nurturing I guess uh, the way we do it is uh, I'll come home from work and on a Saturday or Friday night we like to watch videos uh -huh. <laughs> so we sit back curled up on the couch you know a little popcorn or something if you want to talk you talk if you don't want to talk we just sit and hold each other. And uh, you were saying that, uh, uh, an interesting thing I didn't realize, you were saying that in long-term uh, um, extramarital relation, I don't understand how anybody could keep an extramarital affair going for two years or something, but I, apparently they, I mean, man, that's a I lot guess. of juggling. And, <laughs> Try uh, nine or ten or fifteen years. You, There's some but you were saying a lot of times in uh, what, what happens is that uh, the, that sex isn't even the focus of the extramarital affair, it's uh, being together and uh, being able to talk and have some intimacy and things, it's not the actual sexual act, you know. It's right. The ones that lead to where the man actually leaves his family to start anew with this, with his mistress, a lot of times it, sex, it starts it, but it, it leads to intimacy. And there's a report, the uh, Michael McGill uh, report on male intimacy goes into that. And most wives think that sex is the, what men are looking for. And he says the most dangerous type of extramarital affair is actually one that involves a lot of intimacy where he can confide in, in the mistress, but he can't confide in the wife. That's when it becomes dangerous. I see. Um, what, um, do you have any advice for people out there generally who might be married or uh, uh, struggling to keep a marriage alive? Work at it. They, they have to work at it and make the effort just like uh, a lot of women get caught up in the I call it the will of fortune syndrome where they have everything everything takes uh, he takes a back seat to everything because they've got the kids they've got the dishes and all of this and he gets pushed in the background and they have to make that effort to put him first like like when they were dating you know they have to make that effort. Do you agree with that? I agree completely. Okay. 
Uh, we have a, a short message from our producer, Michael Kruchowski, on guns and kids. Uh, serious topic. We hope you will stay with us because we will be right back. Children and guns are a deadly combination. In the last five years, 25 of New Mexico's children have been killed accidentally while playing with loaded guns. An additional 200 children were shot through gunplay over the same period. Almost all of these injuries occurred when children found loaded, unsecured guns at home. Please don't let your children become one of these statistics. If you have guns at home for any reason, please keep them unloaded. Keep them locked in a safe place away from your children. Use locked trigger guards and keep ammunition stored in a separate location. This message has been brought to you by the Emergency Medical Department of the University of New Mexico School of Medicine. As a personal side note, I'd like to mention that good quality locking trigger guards are available for less than $10 each. If you own a gun, chances are it's worth several hundred dollars. Isn't it worth an additional $10 to safeguard your child's precious life or the life of your child's playmate? Welcome back to Speaking of Men. I'm your host, Mike Rivas, and uh, we're speaking with uh, Earl and Rose Smith of the Married Mistress Association and the Monogamous Males Association, and we're talking about monogamy. Um, let's talk a little bit about, now, you have some youngsters. How many do you have? Two. Two? Little boy, little girl, two? What, what? Yeah, yeah, girl and boy. Five and nine. They're young. I'll be, yeah. Well, they say the child is father to the man, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, being a mom and dad as a couple and uh, interacting with children. Well, I guess uh, part of the theme with the children is that you have, to, you have to make time for them, but you don't have to spend all of your time, each, either spouse. You don't have to spend all of your time with the kid and neglect the spouse. It's the same as neglecting the kids. You got to spend quality time with your children. I mean, the time that you spend with them should mean something, should help them to grow. And as a couple, we make sure we spend a lot of time. My last column and on the scene was about mom and dad are a couple. And I talk to a lot of people that don't get the uh, affection. They don't see their their mom and dad showing affection to each other. So when they grow up and they get married, they don't know how to show affection to their spouse. They think it's something that you hide behind closed doors. And we hold hands. We try to teach couples hold hands, show them that mom and dad love each other and they're together with only each other because they truly want to be together. And you'll pass that, that uh, lesson on to your children so they'll know how to be loving to their spouse and know that it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. That's great. That's great stuff. Uh, you had some things you want to say about teens, didn't you? Um, yes, um, you, you were talking last night about serial monogamy, and I think that's really important for young men to learn from high school on, is when you date, um, you have your girlfriend, you have one girlfriend at a time, instead of having two or three girlfriends, because I think what happens is the, a lot of people learn that that's okay, a lot of men learn, and then they say, well, when I get married, I'll just cut that out, but it's not that easy to do. You bet. You got anything to say about that? Not really, other than the fact that we did, uh, you know, explain that to a small degree about the sex role conditioning right. portion where the kids grow up thinking that you should date a lot of different people. And this is more what I was trying to get across to the people is that you don't want to start a relationship. I know it's popular, but you don't want to start a relationship, not end it, start another one, not end it, start another one. Then you get into this. Uh, polygamous type relationship. You don't want to do that. You do want to end the relationship. I know when you're young it's kind of hard to decide whether this relationship is over, but you got to give it a chance before you move on to the next one. Right, and, and women also have to stand up and say, 
I'm not going to be a party to this polygamy because I think a lot of times men don't know the consequences if they cheat but if they sit down and talk about it and, and he knows for sure that you know if I cheat she's going to leave me which is which is what happens in I think over 50 percent of marriages not too many of them survive after infidelity and if the man knows the consequences of it I think he'll 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 think more about it before he jumps into an extramarital affair you know that whole uh, thing you're talking about uh, the having a sense of closure that uh, you have that we are now in a relationship and uh, you know the the uh, it's just being a human being to go and uh, honor the other person and give them the opportunity to know that you're getting out of the relationship and why and at least it gives you the opportunity to learn from your mistakes so closure is something that everybody talks about these days and mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit more about your book that you have coming and uh, now that's going to be out when it'll be out the fall of this year and it's called best kept secrets of a mistress and what i do is uh... go into the interviews i interviewed over a hundred men and women that were involved in extramarital affairs and i talk about uh... what it is that the man is actually looking for and how he can find it in his own relationship at home how him and his wife can create that you take all the good things out of an extramarital affair and you put it into your relationship and you have a marital affair that's uh, that's that's grand stuff um, <laughs> and uh, you have uh, about 75 different approaches uh, to, to keep a marriage exciting it sounds like most of what you're saying is you got to talk and make it that that um, that love is something you work at it's right. not right. something that just happens and carries you down the road It's something you have to work at keeping alive um, that's uh, that's really that's really good stuff. Um, we, well, we talked about teens a little bit. We talked about being a, a loving uh, uh, mom and dad. Um, if uh, someone uh, wanted to get in touch with you guys, and uh, is there a number they could call or uh, someplace they could write to reach the Married Mistress Association? Well, they can call the number 260-0369. We're in Albuquerque, so it's area code 505. And we have an answering machine there, and also um, I work out of my home, so they can call there anytime. And um, uh, and you guys are just kind of getting uh, monogamous mail off the ground. Mails right. off the ground, and the seminar is about four hours, and it's bi-monthly. That's every two months. Then the meetings are every two months. Now the seminar, the next one probably will be coming up in August. We're trying to kick off a couple seminar because we've gotten a lot of requests to do a couple seminar and that one will be how to have an affair with your mate that's great stuff I you know we uh, one of the one of the things we say on here a whole lot is that uh, uh, in the age of communication we just don't communicate very well that's and uh, I'm continually uh, saying that men and women need some dialogue I'd like to thank you for being on the show we're down to the last couple of uh, a few seconds here uh, this is Speaking of Men. This is public access television for Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, we invite your comments, letters, and input. This program is for you. We uh, urge you to join us uh, uh, each uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, and uh, uh, check the number at the end Give us of the program. Give us a call. Let us know what you think about what we're doing. Give us some ideas for upcoming programs. Uh, my name is Mike Rivas. And uh, I'm your host for this thing. Uh, we'd like to tell you that if you, this is Mike Rivas, this is Earl Smith and Rose Smith, and we're telling you that if you want love, carry it with you. Bye-bye. <laughs>